I'm Chuck, this is What is the Wheel, and I'm going to fix some of the problems that showed up on the first start of this Predator motor. If you watched last week's video of the first start of my Predator, you saw there were a couple of issues. The carburetor was leaking fuel, the torque converter blew apart, and today I'm going to fix those things. But first, I got an eBay. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I really appreciate it. It makes my algorithms do some cool things so more people see my videos. So I thought I might have a pressure problem. This uh, Walbro pump works on crankcase pulses. That's this line right here runs around and works a little diaphragm. That's what pumps fuel. The issue might be this motor turns out is very high revving. I actually, I got a tack, which of course reading zero right now. This thing will rev to 8,900 RPM, no problem. And I believe that it is because it's pumping so hard, it's actually overpressuring the system. So I added a pressure regulator. The other thing I did was adjust the uh, float level in the carburetor, which was off a couple of millimeters. And of course the big thing is I'm gonna come around here and this, this is my solution for my torque converter problem. This is my clone clutching part for my torque converter. And uh, if you watched the last video I had, this thing came apart. And uh, the reason I thought maybe the bell was the wrong size or maybe I forgot to tighten some of my check all that stuff, that was not why. Uh, if you watched all the way to the end, you saw I ran it again uh, and the, it was trying to push the belt completely off of the sheave on this side. Um, I, I believe after checking things out, I did not have a tack on the engine at that time. I put a tack on it. It turns out that, that motor will readily spin to about 8,900 RPM, at which point the valves float. So uh, this is not meant to handle that kind of RPM. So the solution, I thought initially I might, you know, just kind of stick it back together. This thing had the heck bent out of it. And I straightened it, although if you see that video, you can still see it has a little bit of a wiggle in it. But the solution was this. This is the OMB Warehouse Torquezilla. If you buy from Go Power Sports, they call it the Juggernaut. If you buy it directly from Comet, it is called the 500 Series. Uh, they're, I, this one, who knows? This one, the uh, Torquezilla and the Juggernaut might be made in the same place. Actually, the Comet might be made in the same place, for that matter. The Comet 500, it's tough to say. Uh, the Juggernaut and the Torquezilla both run about 90 or 100 bucks. The Comet one is $200. So I bought this, this one, and let's go ahead and take it apart right here. It is unlike the uh, 30 series, which is just comes apart in your hands. You gotta assemble it onto the crankshaft. This is one complete unit. So we're just gonna take it apart, make sure it turns the wheel the right direction. All right. If you don't have an impact wrench, this thing can be kind of hard to get apart. The shell just comes off. You've got your, these are your basically your fly weights. You've got your resistance springs on this thing. And as you accelerate, these are gonna try and come out and they're going to push this down. This is going to push down and uh, that's how you get your increase in uh, your uh, gear your gear increase, not gear reductions, gear increase. That's how you get that. So this is all one assembly. You can get these springs separately and uh, if you need something even stiffer, uh, in the case of OMB, they say this thing is rated for 8,500 RPM. I don't actually intend to run this motor that fast. I'm thinking I'll probably limit it around 6,500 RPM just to be on the safe side, see if I can get it to last a little bit longer. But I, I think this is going to fix my uh, problem with the belt coming off. I did also buy a Comet branded belt just in case I damaged the belt that came with my clone. This is the pressure regulator I got. Storm car, I have no idea what the name of that company is. Uh, this came off Amazon. There was about 15 of them. They looked exactly the same. It looks like a very inexpensive pressure regulator. It's, the chrome is kind of cheap on it and everything. Uh, but it does go all the way down to 1 PSI. You basically just push the knob down and in theory it'll lock into place. 
and it, they're locked on one and a half PSI. I don't really want to lock on one too much, but I'm not going to run it that low anyway. Um, but I'll probably run it about three. So this uh, looks like it'll do the job. The only problem is it has no mount on it anywhere. Uh, the way they had pictures of it, it was just stuck in line with the fuel system. And if you had an automobile, that would probably be fine because it's got big uh, fuel lines on it. But this Tigon line I'm using on the go-kart, that is not going to work. So what I'm going to do is take it apart and see if I can make a mount, uh, like basically drill through it and seal and tap for a mount on the bottom of this. Also, it'd be interesting to see what's inside one of these because I've never taken one apart before. All right, so basically what I figured it would be. It's a, a spring and a diaphragm. And the fuel pressure coming through here is just pushing against this diaphragm, or yeah, pushing against this diaphragm, pushing on this spring. The sp spring is probably, yeah, this part doesn't want to come apart, but it's, you can see we've got a little uh, ramped, a uh, series of ramps inside of here that push down on this and just push this piece in or out which pushes on this little brass piece, which pushes on the spring and puts more load on the diaphragm. And that's how you set your uh, pressure. Let's see, it goes in there one way. It does have two little notches on it, so it does only go in here one direction, like that. And that spring on top. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now, see if we can remove this diaphragm without damaging it any. And we can. Now, my hope was that there was going to be a, uh, I could just drill right through the center, but that is clearly not going to happen because that's where the little, the valve is. That's where it's applying pressure on the valve. So I need to look closely at this thing because you can see how we clearly have fuel coming in. There's a there's our fuel in right here, and we've got this coming into here, and then there's nothing on the other side where this is. Oh, I, duh. <laughs> Super observant. The whole system is open on the other side. So I can uh, drill two holes offset and tap them and create a mount so I can bolt this thing down, and that is what I'm going to do. And if it fails, I'll buy another one. It comes as no shock to me or anyone who watches my channel. I have some stuff in stock, but it is too big. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think, is just lay down these uh, heads so that they will fit in here. The other side fits fine. And, of course, I'll have to shorten them up because they're, what, 60 millimeters long. So uh, I don't really need them to be that long. All right. You can see, cut it down, step the edges just a little bit to take the load off, especially like right here. I don't want to have, whoop, get back in focus. Uh, I don't want to have that hard edge, so I, I just put a little bit of a bevel on it so that it's not, because this thing is probably some kind of pot metal, and I don't want to put too much stress on it and crack it. Because if I got to buy another one, I will, but I prefer not to. So now I just need to do the second one, do the same thing to it. And then I can, well, then drill this out, thread it, put these in there with some kind of sealer, probably maybe just Teflon tape, and um, maybe Teflon tape, maybe RTV, might use RTV. Among the things I'm bad at is getting things lined up and centered. So I really need the holes I drill to be in the center of this little channel in here because there is not much clearance for this head. So it needs to be pretty close to in the middle for the head to fit in there and not bind. Either that or I'm gonna have to hit this thing some more and really neck them down and I'm just starting to get a little on the thin side. So what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm going to put a straight edge. And this is my favorite kind of straight edge all it is is a piece of aluminum stock. These are great. You screw them up, you just throw it away and get another one, or cut it down into smaller pieces and use it for something else. Uh, they're great straight edges. They're very straight, and they're cheap. So 
just go to the hardware store and buy one. But anyway, this is a center punch. This is actually meant for uh, punching holes. Like so, if you had a fitting, like say for instance these holes, and you were attaching a piece to this, and you needed to make sure that your drill mark was in the center, you would get a center punch that was the size of that hole, place it in the hole, and then when you tap the end of it, you could see that this the punch point is in the middle. So what I'm going to try and do is put this right about here, and then I'm going to tap it with a hammer, see if I can manage to not hit the camera, like that. I'm going to put my straight edge back on there. And I'm going to put one right here. All right. So now I should have, and they probably won't show up on the camera, but I've got two little indentations in there that, there they go, you can't see them. And they're not quite centered this way, they're off just a little bit, but that I don't care about, as long as I can get these screws in there. Um, and they're even. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to drill this out and see what happens. I decided to use gasket sealer. I'm going to use this ultra copper gasket maker. Uh, primarily because I have some. I usually use their ultra black, but this is what I got. So I'm going to take it and put it right here where the uh, threads are going to contact when it finally screws all the way down. And hopefully if I threaded this correctly, these will screw right in here. Probably, you know what, it's really more adhesive than I need here. Yeah calibrated finger to get some of this off. I don't want it I don't want it filling up the bottom of the pressure regulator. And those of you who are big on continuity will notice that there there's a, a band-aid on that thumb. I was clearing some scarf off of the lathe and uh, yeah, doing it the way you're supposed to do of course with your bare hand instead of using the a brush that I have sitting right there next to it and uh, shoved a piece of scarf uh, right through my thumb and since uh, YouTube is funny about blood I decided I would put a band-aid on it usually I just let it go but who knows one day I might be monetized and you gotta watch out for that stuff so all right, here we go. I'm going to screw these all the way down, and uh, I did get my clearances right. They are screwing right down in there just like I wanted them to. I'm going to be careful not to screw them in there too tight because this thing is basically pop metal, and it is, not only is it pop metal, it is super thin. So, All right, and then just to be on the safe side, I also got some screws. I'm going to run these down as well. I can get them to throw it on. And all right, I think this is going to work pretty good. And I have a uh, should be able to have like a mount the thing in a nice spot instead of just having it dangling. I really don't want to do that if at all possible. It's a that would be you know, especially with the Tigon tubing is fantastic for um, fuel line, but it is not very stiff. It's not like the you know, kind of braided double wall stuff you typically see in an automotive application. All right, so got our two little mounts there, and we should be able to uh, put it all back together again. I'm gonna let this stuff cure for a while first, but I'll put it all back together again, and then I'll just be able to mount this and run my fuel lines in. This kit came with everything. Came with some fittings, those are too big. These probably will work just right. And hose clamps and everything, which I'm not gonna use the hose clamps, I'll use, I'll wire tie my stuff. But it's not bad, 20 bucks, should, assuming it works. Assuming it, I don't put it, it might make things worse. But uh, we're gonna give this a shot. If you watched the last video, you saw I had an issue with fuel coming out of the bowl vent line. You can see the inside of the bowl right here. This uh, brass tube is it's gonna sit like this. The fuel comes up above the level of this tube. It just runs out of 
this and drains on the ground instead of running into the carburetor. At least that's the idea. You might still get some a little bit of flooding, but it won't be as bad as it could be. You know, it can get washed down and stuff like that and screw up your cylinder. But anyway, I thought the possibility of there were two things. One is that the, the Walbro pump I had on there was pumping too much pressure and it was causing it to overflow slightly. It was overpowering the needle or the inlet needle or my uh, floats were set too high or too low, depending on your perspective. So, so I, I looked it up and the correct height for this is uh, 22 to 24 millimeters. And if it shows up on this thing, I've got my mic set for 22 millimeters. Uh, taking into account this gasket because you're at, you should be measuring from the base of the carburetor and not from the gasket But I'm not taking this gasket out because I don't have another one. I measured the gasket the me gasket measures one millimeter So this is effectively 23 millimeters. So right in the middle of that 22 to 24 range And this thing you can see it's spring-loaded You want it to be just touching that needle not putting any pressure on the spring and Set this right here, and you can see I've got quite a gap in there. So what that means is as the fuel, the carburetor is upside down and as you're looking at it right here. So the fuel is filling up this way. The higher this thing is set, the higher it has to go before it puts pressure on that needle and closes it. So what we need to do is bend this little tab, this little tab right here. And you want to be careful bending it that you don't bend anything else. And I'm going to take a small screwdriver and carefully, I'm going to bend against this little arm right here, which I need to be careful doing that because I don't want to bend that arm. I'm going to bend against that little arm right there. And in all honesty, if I had a little more room in there, I would probably just use a little tiny pair of pliers. Okay, so I, I bent it some. I'm going to go ahead and put it back it together again. And get the pin back in. Ah, look, look at that. Shot it all the way through the other side. That's how it goes. this one here and let's check it again see if I got my number that I'm looking for whoops whoops make sure we don't have any pressure on there put that on and we are we're closer we still don't have it but we're, we're definitely closer now so I'm gonna take it apart you could probably do this without disassembling it but it's a little less likelihood of messing something up if you if you do it this way also and it's not a big deal it's just a little pin you slide out so i'm gonna take this and bend it a little more and i'm really trying not to put much force on anything except that tab all right let's try it again and of course it's one of those things is in here you're making you know a small change at a way right near the pivot point which makes a gross change further out Let's go back on there again okay so here we go and we're still off just a little bit so this is the point where i get aggressive with it and either break something or overdo it and this might have corrected that leak problem i may not have needed to get the uh, fuel pressure regulator, maybe. But it's also possible that this uh, motor is capable of running pretty high RPM. Look at that. Lined up, oops. So it's like parallel to the, the bowl and it is right on the money, right there. So we're gonna call that done. Then you just put your bowl back on wherever it went. And you'll be good to go. Like I was saying, uh, I don't, maybe don't, this might have fixed the problem. And I can't find the bolt. There's the bolt right there still attached because it runs, the vent line runs through the side of the bolt. Uh, 
this it, this may not have been a pro the uh, or not this the pressure may not have been a problem it may have been this uh, especially it was adjusted very low uh, when I looked up the height of the uh, float uh, apparently this is not an unusual thing so if you happen to be uh, using one of these VM26s or really any uh, carburetor not a bad idea to if it's brand new or even if it's not brand new if you pull it out of a trash pile or whatever is go ahead and take it apart and take a look at it and make sure everything is in spec. I, I did, before I started it, I did adjust the uh, idle mix, and that was about it. That was really the only thing I did because I just wanted to have some kind of baseline for that. Um, it was running pretty rich when I fired it up, but because this could have been the issue, and that it was pumping a lot of extra fuel in there, or not pumping, but the fuel level was way too high. I'm going to let it go for right now. I'm not going to change the main jet just yet. And since this thing has easy access to the main jet, it's not a big deal to do it. I got a, a box of them, a bunch of different sizes. So if that's something I need to do, that'll be easy enough. Also, when you take one of these off, just unscrew the slide and take the slide off. You don't need to take it all apart and everything, you know, get, try and get the, uh, throttle cable out. Just unscrew the slide and set it aside. Uh, that's the easiest thing to do with one of these. And we'll just put it back on there real quick and fire it up again. Of course, it wouldn't be a video without a start. we got to start it up. I have not uh, cranked it up since I put all this stuff on here. So once again, this is going to be a first start. I did uh, prime it mostly, although you can see there's some air in the line here right now. So we'll see what happens. If the carburetor is full of fuel, which it looks like it is, we'll probably be fine. Get one or two, hopefully start off in two or three pulls. Somebody's idle is set too high. All right, let's try that again. got a leak that's something to take care of right there got to figure out what that is maybe my drill and tap job was a uh, uh, not as good as it could be on the bright side the torque converter did not fly apart they do say this uh, torquezilla is only for modified motors if you put it on a stock engine uh, you'll probably actually get worse performance because this thing takes some effort, takes some RPM to get it to uh, feed out and change the gearing, increase your gear ratio. Well, that'll wake the neighbors. So we solved a couple of problems. Got a couple of new problems. Got a little bit of a leak. You can see the torque converter works great. I think everything is going pretty well. So as always, like, subscribe, Leave a comment. Please leave a comment. I like those a lot. And everybody have a great day.